What's good YouTube? It's a Christ of Earth and Prophecy and uh, today man I'm going to talk about um, money financial or financial monies. Uh, basically it's about you know uh, how, to, how to manage your money. You know what I'm saying? Obviously I got my you know safe, got my wallet, you know what I'm saying? Now and I got this Bible you know, Bible promises, Bible promises. And uh, if anybody who knows what the Bible stands for, basic instructions before leaving earth, you know. So today we're going to talk about why is it important to value your money. Now, um, so... You know, you have scriptures like uh, you have accomplishments, answered prayers, answered prayer, blessings, charity, children, children of God, uh, and then a whole bunch of others. But today we're going to talk about self-wealth, self-worth, um, page 114, 148. So, page 148. All right, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to read a passage. Uh, let's do Peter 1 verses 13. It says, where is it at? Peter 1 verses 14, 13. It says, prepare your minds for action. Be self-controlled. Set your hope fully on the grace to be given when Jesus Christ is revealed. Now, what does that mean? Prepare your mind for action. Be self-controlled. Set your hope fully on the grace to be given when God, when Jesus Christ is revealed. So basically what they mean, what it means is basically give your mind an open thought. You know, like we spend money all the time, right? Like, how much is this? This is basically, and I already counted it, this is basically $70, right? It's chump change, you know? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my, um, my safe. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to open up my safe. Hold on, it tends to drag out a little bit sometimes. And how much is this? This is about... If I had to estimate, this is probably about 80, 80 dollars, right? And then in this envelope right here, this envelope right here, This envelope right here is about nothing but hundreds, you know, in twenties, obviously. So right here, this is all about this is about ninety dollars right here. So the number one thing in in in, in life about money is to have emergency, you know. To keep it away on a rainy day. You know, like, why do we spend so much money? And then when we spend so much money, we don't have it anymore. Right? It's not like we don't have it anymore. It's just basically, you know, we spend on things that we don't need. You know? We spend on things that we don't need. We spend it on stuff that we don't need. Now, obviously, we can't help ourselves because a lot of people have their addiction. You know what I'm saying? Most people are addicted to buying, you know? Like, for me, I'm not really a big spender. I never was a big spender, you know? At an early age, I was taught that, you know, to have money, you have to save money, you know? To have money, you have to save money. And, um... And, you know, I used to, 
I used to uh, watch a lot of Warren Buffett videos. And if you don't know who Warren Buffett is, he's basically a guru on how not in... I mean, he's a guru on how not and what to spend on money, right? On things, like just control of your money. Because if you spend all your money, guess what? You're going to have to work for it. You're going to have to work. You're going to have to work for it all over again, you know? Like, it would be nice for you to have a couple of, you know, hundreds, a couple of twenties, a couple of fifties in your bank account. Or you could be like me to where you can have at least... Eighty dollars, you know, carry eighty dollars with you. You don't necessarily have to go anywhere, or or in case if you are going somewhere, just have money with you. You know, not to just brag and to show out, but just to have money. You know, because a lot a lot of these days, people that's in relationship they're broke. Why do like why are people in the relationships broke? Well, let's go to the Bible. The reason why people are broke in relationships, um, let me see, I'm trying to look for a good one. Okay, love for others, lo as you can see, love, love for others is on page 94. All right, so love for others says, hmm, which one? Um, okay, I'm going to read Colossus, Colossus chapter 13, verses 12. It says, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, cloth yourselves with passion, kindness, humanitary, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievous you may have against each other. Forever as the Lord forgave you and all and over all these virtues, put one love which blinds them all together in perfect unity. So what that means is basically you have to forgive. You have to forgive and for you, you have to forget. Take all the things that you spent or take all the things that you regret buying and just put it in a bundle and just throw it out the window. Because once you hold on to that grief, you're just going to have to go, you're just going in a repeated cycle. You know what I'm saying? You're just going into a repeated cycle. And I'm going to read one more uh, John 4, verses 12. No one has... Let me see. Yeah, so it says, No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us, and His love is made completely in us. So that means, again, if you see a bum on the street, a homeless man, or a hobo, or, you know, a, a crackhead, or whoever, love thy one another. You know? Like... He, he, like God would love you, you know? So basically, if you see anybody in the street, give them a dollar. It don't have to be $100. It don't have to be $400. It could just be a dollar, $2. Whatever they do with their money is their business. If they want to go in there and, you know, do whatever with that money, it's their money, you know what I'm saying? But you know that in your heart that you did the right thing, you know what I'm saying? Now, again... That person might probably go around and sell drugs with that money and probably get high because that's the only thing he knows. But again, you cannot judge because God wouldn't allow you to or God wouldn't judge himself, you know, in that stature. So whatever you have that's tied or you just want to, you know, quit the habit of spending because a lot of people spend for no reason. They spend, they'll tell you, oh, I like this or I like that, but they just spend because they don't know the value of money, to be honest with you. Like, if you knew the value of money, 
you would say, okay, this is how I'm going to manage my money. And this is how I'm going to, you know, take my money to the next level, you know. Because when you die, the money's still going to be here. Look at all these famous rappers that has passed away. Some of these money, some of the money that they left behind, guess where it goes to? Their kids. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like a will thing, you know. Uh, kind of like, it, I mean, it either go to their wife, girlfriend, and then obviously it's, it's always going to go through the kids. So whatever they left behind, it's going to go to the kids. You know, like DMX, uh, not D, uh, Jay-Z auction, uh, DMX, Masters, Classics. You know, basically his, his classic, like uh, his first three albums were at Platinum Gold. You know? So what did Jay-Z do out of the kindness of his heart? He sold all those, and obviously all those profits is going to go to where? His 13 kids, right? So when they all grow up, they'll have something to look forward for. You know what I'm saying? Like they won't be, you know, broke on the streets looking like some of these, you know, athletes that's out here or looking like some of these musicians that's out here that's broke as hell. You know what I'm saying? So, same thing with Michael Jackson. You know what I'm saying? All that money that he accumulated goes straight to his kids. You know, Bernie Mac, same thing. All those money that goes to his kids. Prince, even if even if he has. I don't know if Prince has kids. All that money is going to who? His kids. You know what I'm saying? If Whitney Houston's daughter was still alive, obviously all that money would have gone to her. You know what I'm saying? So it's always, you know, a repeating door. So that's why I say that money is the root of all evil because money cure things, but then again, money breaks you down mentally. You know, can't fix a car, you get stressed out. You start growing gray hair. You can't afford a haircut. You, you know, you, you can't afford hats and, 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 and like, look at my closet right now. This is how I save, you know, I'm not a, I'm not one of those, you know, cheapskate type of people. It's just, you know, I've been around a lot of Asian friends and, uh, you know, and they're more, they're, they're more of a um, financial guru than more than, than, you know, than just any other person, you know what I'm saying? Because my closet could have been filled from rack to rack, you know? Like, all my shoes, like, look at the shoes that I have. Like, this one, Feelies. I have the Feelies. I have the MJs, okay? And I have the Jordans. No, these are the LeBrons. Sorry, I said Jordans. These are the LeBrons. And I wear these every single day. I make sure I clean them real good. You know what I'm saying? I don't put them in the washing machine because the washing machine eats it up. So, obviously, because that's what happened to my black uh, Nikes. Actually, my brown Nikes. I had, like, brown Nike shoes. I put it in a damn washing machine and it, and it tore it up. You know, it started peeling off the back and stuff when I, when I used to go to middle school. So, I have to throw that shit. I had to throw it in the garbage, so I just do it by hand, you know what I'm saying, put soap, put like a little rag, I have like one of those, you know, um, those little, what you call it, those little sponges where you could just, you know, add a little bit of water to it and you start rubbing it off, scrubbing it, but, I mean, and then obviously I got more shoes, but the shoes up here is probably like church shoes. I got my slippers, so I don't necessarily I don't necessarily spend a lot, you know. Like these are all the clothes I got. I got this, like these two are for like churches. These three are like church for churches. This is what I actually bought for my birthday, you know. Like I was looking all over for it because I thought my mom sent it to Haiti and stuff, but uh, obviously she didn't. She packed it in one of her boxes, and I was looking all over for it. So I was gonna, I was just, I was just gonna order me another one, but until she, you know, unpacked it, and she said, "Oh, this is what you was looking for," and obviously, you know, it's just a, it's just an Aquarius T-shirt that tells you the ingredients, 
you know. Like, I'll read it out to you, too. Um, it's kind of like a, it's kind of blurry to see. I don't know if y'all can see that. I have to make it, like, perfect, stretched out. You know what I'm saying? So, it says, unique as hell. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that's 100, that's 241%. Sarcastic, that's, that's 150 uh, mind reading, that's a 188, uh, wild, cra wild and crazy at times, <laughs> that's, a, <laughs> that's 99.99, rebellious, uh, that's 500, lawyer to the end, that's 150, independent, that's 205, musical, tasteful, that's 160, uh, lie detector, that's 200, kindness, if, Treated well, that's 300. And dangerous when provoked, that's 100. So it basically tells you the, you know, nutrition or that, or basically the, the, uh, the facts about us, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, I got a more church clothes and then I got this. So I don't necessarily have a lot, you know? Uh, not that I'm cheap or anything. It's just, you know, the way that my friends taught me how to spend, I took that and basically, you know, valued it, you know? Because I used to have a lot of Asian friends, you know? I barely hang out with black friends. If I did hang out with black friends, it was probably on the football team because I knew, like, three closest friends that was on the football team. Other than that, I'll probably, if I had, put a, if I had to put a percentage on it, I'll probably say 60% of my friends was Asian. Why? Because Asians, they're, they're more sophisticated than us. They think better than us. Now, I'm not saying that just to, you know, throw shade. It basic, it, it's basically true, you know? Um, you know, they have a, their way of thinking is not the way we think. You know, like if we, like if we, if we literally thought, thought like Asians... This whole world would have been different, but we don't. But that's why everybody have their own, you know, their their own mindset. You know, like not everybody thinks the same. If everybody thought the same, this world would have been dead a long time ago. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But uh, to finish this off, uh, I highlighted um, some of the. Um, I hide. I highlighted some of the. The table of continents. Patience. And that's the final thing in money. Patience. In life, just like just just in just like in life, you have to have patience. What number is it? 108. And I'm gonna read you one of the best quotes that I have. I can follow. Oh, there it goes. Hold on. Parents. Patience. There you go. Okay. So this is profit. No, this is pride. No, hold on. What is this? This is Proverbs uh, 14 verses, chapter four, 14 verses uh, 29. And this is my greatest quote. This is the greatest quote I have ever heard. A patient man has great understanding, but a quick-tempered man displays fully. You understand that? A patient man has great understanding, but a quick-tempered man displays fully. So what does that mean? And that really stuck to me because I didn't know what that means until I actually had to not look it up, but just think real hard. A patient man has great understanding. But a quick-tempered man displays fully. So basically what it means is, for me, I'm a very patient guy. I'm one of the most patient guys that you'll ever know. But if you find somebody with a short fuse or just somebody that just gets 
ticked off real quick, he's going to make foolish mistakes. He's going to make foolish mistakes. You know? Because when you're patient, you take your time. You don't rush it. You know, you let it come to you. But if you one of those guys that's just hothead and, you know, don't necessarily have the patience to wait and you just rush it, everything is going to go wrong. And that was my favorite quote when I actually had this book. My mom gave me this book. It's basically about Bible promises for you. You know what I'm saying? It says every uh, it says every circumstances reasons of life, I mean seasons of life. God has promised that all offer directions, peace, respective, respective and wisdom. Bible promises for you is a collection of promises taken from the New International Version of the Bible and is characterized by topic for easy reference. And I read every, I read every two to three days of great, you know, life that I can take from this Bible and I apply it to life. You know what I'm saying? Because if Bible stands for basic instructions before leaving earth, what are the basic instructions? That's the beauty of it. What are the basic instructions before leaving earth? What instructions does God want us to, to, to take before we leave earth? Be good with to one another. Never sin. Thy by thy by. I mean, thou shall, thou shall honor mother and father. Thou shall honor sister and brother. Like what are 